everybody and welcome to the second part of loading sprites from our sprite sheet um now the code i'm going to teach you might not be possible might not be the possible or efficient most efficient way to do it but this is the way i do it sometimes and it just seems easy so i'm teaching this from a beginner's perspective right so if you later on down the road find a faster or more efficient or a better way to do it then by all means do it that way but I'm gonna teach you this way this will teach you the basic concepts of loading sprites from a sprite sheet so now we're gonna be just doing a little bit of calculating so where a bit of the math comes in not really hard just basic so our sprite sheet that our sprite from our last tutorial is 96 by 128 and it goes three sprites across and four sprites up and down right so basically we need to calculate <coughs> where each individual sprite starts in the x coordinates because remember x goes horizontally and y goes vertically so we need to find out what 96 divided by 3 is and if you don't know that 96 divided by 3 is 32 and we need to find out what, what this is 128 on the vertical side so we need to find out what 128 divided by 4 is equal and that's equal to 32 also so basically each sprite is 32 by 32 so that's how we know that right so then whenever we're making an image say we want to draw this standing image right here this would be 32 spaces to the right and this would um because it's the x coordinate and the y coordinate would be zero. So if we wanted to draw this certain walking sprite, the x would be thirty two and y would be zero. If you want to draw um this sprite right here, the x coordinate would be zero and the y coordinate would be zero. Now um so you want to draw this sprite over here, x coordinate would be thirty two and the y coordinate would be um what would it be it'd be 64 and uh that's basically how we calculate which sprites to draw so this might sound a bit confusing but i'm gonna make it easier now most times in beginner tutorials people don't teach about this defined function so i'm gonna go through it quickly define basically um it's like declaring a variable but it's like a constant value you could use constant int or whatever but it's just better to use define because there's more stuff you could do with the define statement but i won't teach you that now so we're going to define a value and the va the, the the variable's name is down and we're gonna the reason why I put down first is because it goes down, left, right, and up because of the way the sprite is facing. So what we're declaring for is the y coordinates, right? So when the person's facing down, the y is always going to start at zero. So even if they're if they're using this sprite, the y is zero, y is zero over here, and y is zero over here. So we're going to put that equal to zero. So let's go back to the program. And with define statements, once you put it, you don't have to put a semicolon at the end. Just put spaces. So I'm going to put the next one is left, right? So I'm going to put left and 0 plus 32 because the next one down is because, remember, 128 divided by 4 is 32. So right here is 0 plus 32 would be here plus 32 would be here plus another 32 would be over there. So... Let's go back and so left is 32 define right is equal to 64 and define up which is equal to 96 so now we got that now we want to load our image so we put bitmap and name it whatever you want walking is equal to load underscore bitmap and I named it walking dot bmp and set this to null 
so now we've loaded it to the screen so just to see if we have put it in the right folder let's put blit and walking and our destination is a buffer make sure you put it after background image and if you've seen the tutorial before these so the source is put zero 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 and put width um it's 96 by 128 and let's just run this and as you can see you see the sprites right there now you see you have the magenta background right there remember how I said magenta is transparent well this is how you make it transparent now you just put masked underscore blit and that and what this function does is it makes the magenta color transparent so if you run this see you notice there's no magenta background so this is going to be important and let me just check how much time I have left um yeah I'll leave this at there so you've learned how to load in your image to into Allegro and you've learned how to load sprite sheet and stuff and we're gonna get into more of this what this define and stuff do in the next tutorial so I hope you liked it and bye